Ignore the blender in the background. That is my wife making her morning smoothie. Well, early afternoon smoothie, I guess. Hello and welcome to the Control Room, the Creative Control Room podcast pre-show, behind the scenes. It's a part of the show you won't hear or see in the audio-only version. And it's a part of the show where I go around and make sure that all systems are go. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to check on our internet connection, which at least at the moment looks good. No drop frames or anything like that. We're going to look at uh, the different channels that we're streaming to, such as Facebook and Twitter and Twitch and, of course, YouTube. Make sure we're up there. Twitter, good to go. Twitch should be chiming in any moment here um what else there we go okay and then we're also going to check our camera so we got camera one we got camera two i feel like i need to bring you down a little bit or maybe okay camera two we got camera three in the back there um and uh okay so cameras are looking good uh, now we need to check our audio. So on the roadcaster, we've got everything potted up correctly. Um, we are recording on OBS. Mic levels look good. Um, make sure our sound effects are up and running. Cool. Uh, next thing we need to check is our lighting. We got all our lights on. We got our background light, key light. Key light is set to the proper setting. I made sure to check that when we before I started here. Got our background lights on. Good to go there. This desk is dusty. I gotta dust this thing. Anyway, uh, and also check the stream deck. Make sure that our little intros and animations are working correctly. Got something cool to show you today, which, okay, so that's, all right, we'll save that for later. Um, and with that, I think we are just about good to go. Nope, quiet. Let's see why is it? Oh, there we go. Um, okay. <clears throat> so today is Sunday, October 3rd. Today we're talking about gear, among other things. So let's go ahead and get into it, shall we? <clears throat> Hello and welcome to the Creative Control Room podcast, a show for creators making... Wait, no, let me start that over because I forgot the episode number. Messed it up. Hello and welcome to episode number 95 of the Creative Control Room Podcast, a show for creators, makers, and doers, where my goal is to help you make to the max. I'm your operator, Ryan Hafey, and in this episode, I'm going to tell you about the gear that I use the most, the gear and accessories that I use most on a day-to-day -day basis. Let's roll that unofficial intro. Here we go. Welcome to the show. Thank you all so much for being here. Hey, if you're new here, my name is Ryan Hafey. This is the Creative Control Room Podcast. And this is uh, this is my Creative Control Room. This is where I work on all my different, different various projects. Um, and it's also where I come to share all the things that I know when it comes to photography, uh, videography, camera gear, podcasting, live streaming, FPV, you name it, anything in the creative realm. Uh, this is where I come to reveal as much as I know, every week. So if you're into any of that stuff, this show may be the show for you, and I invite you to stick around um, and uh, hit that subscribe button wherever you happen to be watching or listening. Also, follow me on social media, at Ryan Hafey on Instagram and Twitter. Feel free to swing by, say hello, drop me a line, ask a question, whatever floats your boat. Happy to have you here. Um, so today we've got a fun one. Got a few things to talk about right off the bat. Uh, I've got some updates um, just more or less, not, not so much updates, but just kind of cool stuff I want to talk about. So the first thing, um, I'm going to jump right into this. This is something I saw on TikTok the other day. I'm a big TikTok fan. Hold on. I got to pause that. So this was, um, I don't know. I don't think there's a way to make this full screen. So we're just going to have to play it like this when we get to the screen. I'll, don't worry. I'll change it over. So we've all seen kind of like some of these behind the scenes shots. Like I know, um, when, uh, what was it? Old Spice. They would do with that, the the kind of 
um, strapping dude like would be on a horse and then he'd be f swimming through a fish tank and, and it turns out that all that stuff was filmed practically um, with just a lot of crazy engineering it looked pretty cool so I always thought that stuff was really really neat the the engineering behind it seemed pretty cool so this um, is behind the scenes of I believe a Domino's commercial where they do kind of the same thing so I'm just flipping through TikTok and this pops up my feed and I, uh, I was very impressed by it, so I wanted to share that with all of you. So let me get this set up here. We'll switch over to the screen. Uh, I'm going to turn off me so you can see everything here. And I wonder if I can zoom in maybe a little bit more. That's a little bit better. One more. There we go. Okay. So check this out. Uh, let's see. Desktop is on. Here we go with this. So this is showing you the behind the scenes now, and then afterwards you'll kind of see what the uh, final result is. At Domino's, unlike Let's check this out. Apps that add surprise fees, we're adding on fifty million dollars in surprise frees. So you could get surprise free cheese. This part's the best. Watch this. Oh, look how that. Oh, that cheese. It's crazy because it looks like something that could be like CGI or composites or something like that. It's literally all done in one take. Watch this. See it in real time, get their kind of real time reactions. The cheese. Very nice. So anyway, whoop, turn that off. Get rid of that. Boom. So I thought that was really neat. I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, a link to that TikTok, if you'd like to share it yourself, is in the description of this video. All right, so there was that. Uh, next thing I wanted to bring up was I have right here the iPhone 13 Pro, and I've got some initial thoughts on it. I've only had it for a couple days now, um, but uh, so far, so good, and I just wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about it, and to do that, um, there's this cool new program that I found out about and of course it's gonna give me a hard time it was already set up and then now I have to uh, let me restart this thing this cool new program that isn't working just kidding oh shit <laughs> didn't mean to do that um, here we go so basically this program that I'm opening is a uh, screen mirroring program I've never really had the need to mirror my 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 phone screen onto my computer, uh, but just did a quick Google search and found that there are programs that allow you to do that and it works pretty well. Uh, but it also has the added benefit of allowing me to show you um, directly from my phone here what's going on on the screen. So, okay, we should be up and running now. Let's see if I can switch this over. Nope, not yet. Hold on. Oh, I know why. Oh, there it is. Cool. Sweet. So I want to open the camera here and we're going to turn this to the side and I uh, figured I'd just give you kind of a little overview, unplug it here, of some of the different camera features. So um, one of the, there we go. So the iPhone has three cameras on the back of it and they're freaking huge. So actually if I go back here, um, nope, wait a minute. No, turn off, turn that off. Oh, oh, this is this is terrible. Okay, there we go. Now let's go back here, and we're in the studio. Let's go to this one. I mean, look at the size of those cameras on the back of that, and like just for comparison, this is an iPhone eight. Like that's insane. And I, my understanding is that. The reason they did that was um, to allow for a bigger sensor size so that you could uh, kind of get more natural depth of field. When you have a super small sensor, it's very difficult, even with a wide aperture, to get that sort of a uh, milky depth of field. So this kind of helps alleviate that. But also you have three different camera options. So you have a super wide, <laughs> like this is me holding the camera out at arm's length. Like that's insane how crazy wide that is 
And then you can also zoom in like this. And um, the this is going to get really personal here. But this also has a macro mode, which, by the way, there's a, a you'll watch it switch as I move closer to my face. But watch, we'll zoom into my eye here. There you go. You see how it kind of switched there? So it, it kind of, without any warning, and there's no way to turn it off, it sort of switches into this macro. Oh, my eye's a little red. But it sort of switches into this macro mode. But when it does that, it allows you to get wicked close. Like I'm, this thing is right on my eyeball here. And uh, so, yeah, that's pretty neat. Um but so this app that I'm using, by the way, is called A Power. What is it? Let me double check. A Power Mirror. Um, there's a free version, but you only get to use it for a few minutes. Otherwise, it's sixty bucks. I paid the sixty bucks because uh, I could see myself using this for the future. There's also apps, and actually, here we'll go back here for the the meantime while I figure this out. There's also an app uh, that you can download. It was a very simple one, just called uh, it's called Full Screen Camera. So in theory. Uh, if you wanted to, you could simply, oh, actually, hold on, let me see here. There we go. So you could, in theory, uh, and you'd have to just kind of adjust it within OBS, but you could use your phone as kind of your streaming device. You could put it into OBS and use it as as your camera if you wanted to. Um, the only downside, at least for this particular app, and honestly, I didn't try too hard to um, to look for other apps similar to it, but you don't have any con control over the camera at all. You can't change to the wide angle or to the zoom. Um, so you're kind of stuck with this mode. Um, but that's an option for you if you want to. Obviously, you know, color grading and things like that. This is also has a LUT applied. Or no, it doesn't. Yeah, no, this doesn't have a LUT. So this is straight out of the iPhone. A um, little bit harsh, a little bit oversaturated, saturated in my opinion, at least in comparison to this. I like this much better, but, um, that, th th that option is there for you. So anyway, um, and this is kind of what the, the program looks like. I know you get the woo, crazy mirror effect, but, uh, this is what the app looks like on the phone or on the, uh, PC that allows you to mirror. But anyway, there you go. So I thought that was pretty cool. Just wanted to show off the cameras real quick. Um, also talk about a few different features, uh, of the new iPhone that, um, I like and, and some that I'm having some issues with. So um, the camera, I, I, I'm upgrading from the cam the iPhone XS, XS. I don't know how they're calling it these days. This is definitely bigger. This is not the Max. This is just the iPhone 13 Pro. It's definitely bigger. It's definitely thicker. Bigger cameras on the back. Uh, but apparently the battery lasts a lot longer. Uh, the camera bump is crazy big. Again, if we go here... You can kind of see there's like look at I know I have a case on it but you can just you can get an idea of how far the cameras stick out of the the back of the phone and that to me is a bit annoying because you can't lay the phone down flat even like unless you have a really thick case but if you put the phone down on a table and, and tap it like that you're gonna have some um, some off-balance stuff so that's a little bit annoying I do notice a, a big boost in well, uh, a sizable boost in performance. I'll notice that some apps that would typically lag in certain points are loading a lot more quickly. So definitely a performance upgrade. And again, I'm a few um, generations behind. Uh, the display is now a 120 hertz display versus the previous 60 hertz displays on previous iPhone models. Um, and unless you're, at least in my case, unless you're looking for it, you it's kind of hard to notice the difference. But what you, what, like, where, where you can really see a difference is when you're scrolling. Let's say if you're on your Twitter feed, scrolling looks a lot more smooth, a lot more fluid, and a lot less just like stuttery. So I, I have to imagine, I haven't really done a side-by-side -side comparison, but I would have to imagine that if I was side-by-side -side with this phone and then a 60 hertz iPhone, you would see the difference a lot more clearly. But it's pretty cool that they incorporated that. Um, talked about speed and performance. So I am having some issues with it though. Um, this It does have, I know there were some known issues with the uh, iOS 15 on this, the issues that I'm currently having, it's really just one. And that is the, so, okay. When I, tr when I transitioned over to this phone, I did it from 
I did uh, the device to device wireless transfer. So it's, you know, you can just put the phone side by side and the files automatically transfer over wirelessly. And I did that. So I, I originally backed up my phone, my old phone onto my PC through iTunes, but I guess I encrypted the backup and I forgot what the password was. So that's why I did the direct transfer. On the old iPhone, I also had um, certain things backed up to iCloud, but not everything. I didn't do a full phone backup because I, I don't pay for iCloud, iCloud storage. But things like notes and fitness data and all that kind of stuff were backed up to iCloud. And if I go to iCloud.com and log in, I can see all that information there. I can see all my notes there. Everything has since synced with my iPhone, my, the iPhone 13 Pro, except for my notes iCloud uh, user is the same on on all devices, but for whatever reason, um, you know, I checked this more like ye- or yesterday. A lot of my fitness data was missing. I charged it overnight, and that information downloaded. But my notes that are in iCloud won't sync with my phone for whatever reason. I was on the phone with Apple for over an hour yesterday trying to figure it out. They couldn't figure it out, so I have another call with them on Tuesday to try to get that taken care of. So that's a bit annoying. Uh, I use notes a lot, um, typically, usually just for like tracking workouts and things like that. But there, I have a lot from over the years, so I'd, I'd like to have those back on my phone. But overall, uh, pretty happy with the phone. Um, and uh, yeah, it was just kind of time for me to upgrade. So that's what we did. <sighs> All right. So those are my two updates for today. Let's move on and talk about the main topic for today, which is um, really just kind of a show and tell of a lot of the different gear that I happen to use on a daily basis. And this is excluding gear here in the office. So this is not going to include podcast gear. I have done videos in the past on basically all the gear that I have in this studio. Um, So feel free to watch those if you're interested specifically in the studio gear, or if you would like another overview of the gear and, you know, my, my podcast setup, leave me a comment and uh, I'll, I'll maybe include that in a future video. But as you can see back here, I have a pretty big pile of stuff. So I'm just going to kind of go through and, and, and this was me just sort of going through my gear, picking out, yep, use that, I use that, I use that. And uh, we're going to go through this, and I'll just kind of talk about each thing and why I use it, why I like it. None of this is sponsored by anything. Most of the gear I'll be mentioning, or a lot of it, will be uh, in the links below. If it's not and you want a specific link to anything, let me know, and I'll send it to you. But in no particular order, let's just kind of go through this. So for starters, we have uh, how are we talking? Okay, cool. We have the Sony A7 IV, or no, A7 III, sorry. A7 IV has been on the line uh, on the mind a lot because uh, it's um, they're coming out with apparently in October is when they're set to like later this month they're set to release A7 IV. We'll see if that happens. I hope they do because uh, I might get it. But anyway, back to the matter at hand. So this is my go-to A cam for most things, and uh, currently on this is the Sony 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8 lens, great lens. Um, on this is a small rig cage. Um, I'm a big cage guy. I know some people aren't. I know that it adds a lot of size to the camera, but for me, number one, you know, if I ever have a need to attach anything to it, there's so many different areas where you can attach things on this, um, to where the possibilities are endless. Number two, it adds a little bit of structure integrity, uh, structural integrity to it. Um, this frame is very solid. It is a metal frame. I feel like if I were to drop it on the corner of that, it would do a good job at protecting the camera. Um, and also it just kind of, it fits better in the hand. I can, I can grab it a little bit better. It's just a little bit more sturdy and it's really not that heavy. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how much the frame weighs exactly, but the frame, um, is pretty light and, uh, just takes up a little bit of extra space. If you're okay with that, then uh, a frame like that might be good for you. So Sony a7 IV, I like this camera. It's a very good all around camera, still works great. And I still got some dirt on it from a recent shoot. Um, but highly recommended camera and you can probably get one for a decent price now that they're, since they're coming out with the a7 IV soon. So that's number one. Uh, and I'm, like I said, I'm just going to be grabbing these in, in random order. Number two is this little guy. 
This is a rocket blower. Uh, these things are great, especially if you shoot mirrorless. Mirrorless cameras because, actually, no, let me go back here. Unlike with DSLR cameras where the sensor is behind a physical mirror, um, mirrorless cameras, the sensor is right there. So when you change lenses, you are much, much more susceptible to uh, getting dust and debris inside your uh, sensor. So a rocket blower, almost every time that I change my lens out, I do a quick blow on the sensor and even sometimes in the into the lens just to make sure that any debris that's in there gets out. Great little tool. Um, this is a small one they have. Uh, what's up, Daniel? How you doing? Um, and then... I don't know. Oh, wait. They also have bigger ones. So this one I keep in my travel bag. This one stays at home. But anyway, rocket blowers. Great tools. Next up, we have this, which is the Deity D4 Duo shotgun microphone. This little guy is uh, has replaced for me like the vi Rode Video Micro as well as the Rode Video Mic Pro, I think it's called. And the reason I've talked about this microphone before, but the reason I like this is because if you see this here, um, right there, it's got a little switch on it. Uh, and that switch basically controls which direction you record from. So this thing can record in two directions. So, you know, if you're someone who vlogs a lot, uh, and let's say you, you tend to turn the camera around uh, and film yourself and then you might turn it and film someone else and maybe you want your dialogue to be picked up as you're con Conversing with the person in front of you you can set this up to record in both directions So you can have it record just in front or in front and behind and then you can separate those channels out when you're editing Sound quality on this obviously. I mean, it's it's a non Powered microphone, so it's not going to be the best of the best quality. You're getting shotgun, you know microphone quality but it's not bad and um you know, again, depending on what you own, <laughs> I, I need to wash this. I don't know if you can see that, but even more dirt in this thing. But anyway, um, it's great. I, I like it. It's small. It's compact. Just kind of fits right in your bag, sits nicely on top of the camera. Um, and I think it's only like a hundred bucks. Could be maybe even closer to 80 bucks, something like that. Uh, but check it out if you're looking for an inexpensive and very versatile shotgun microphone. Next up, just grabbing away. This is a SanDisk uh, SSD external hard drive. I have like three or four of these for various purposes. Uh, take them with me whenever I travel, whenever I go on client visits. Uh, That's what they look like. And this one is a two terabyte version. Um, there are uh, different sizes, half terabyte, one terabyte. Now these are more pricey as far as hard drives are concerned, um, but they are very, very fast. In fact, I do almost all of my video editing off of drives like this because of the tra the transfer speeds are so fast. If you are an on-the-go video editor, you definitely do not want to get a physical hard drive. Uh, those speeds are very limited, and especially with can you know video file sizes being as big as they are and how much data is required and how much bandwidth is required these days, you need a drive that can process speeds very quickly. These SSDs can do that very well. Um, so pick one of these up if you can. They're also nice and small and can fit basically wherever you go. This one has USB-C and USB 3.0. Um, so again, very cool. Try it, check that out. Next up, let's go to, what's up Robert? Robert in the chat, good to see you. This one is another audio device. This is the Tascam DR. 10L. This I've talked about this one before as well. So this is a lavalier microphone that is basically kind of an all-in-one unit. Now, wireless lavalier mic systems are great, but they are different. Uh, they are expensive if you um, if you want good quality. It's hard to get good quality from wireless mics. In fact, I, I've had a couple uh, uh, Chinese manufacturers reach out to me in the past asking to, you know if I would be willing to review some of their products and I think I've done episodes where I featured them and they're just not good like you know the cheap kind of knockoff wireless lavalier mics they're just not good so this is sort of a I've, I've 
you would think that, okay, so the way that this works is you, you literally just clip it onto your subject, turn this thing on, turn it on record, put it in their back pocket. The battery life lasts forever. And this thing will record two uh, volumes of audio, um, just kind of whatever vo standard volume. And then you can set it to record a second file of either negative six or negative 12 decibels, which is great if you have someone maybe that maybe you're in a loud environment or maybe the person you're talking to happens to scream or something or some loud noise where maybe the the regular the original recording clips you can go back to one of those other recordings um it's about a hundred bucks if i remember correctly but this thing's great and it's very reliable i've never had any issues with it very easy to use um kind of low footprint doesn't take up a lot of space audio quality is very passable uh, so I love this thing. I take it anytime I go on any kind of training camp visit or, you know, do any client work when I want to mic anybody up. I like this thing a lot. comes with a little carrying bag. Check this out if, you, uh, if, you, if you're in need of something like that. This, uh, moving on, this is a newer quick release plate. So I have many of these. And the reason I have so many of them is because it allows me to quickly move uh, from one piece of equipment to another. So, for example, I have this top piece on my tripod. I have this top piece on uh, beneath this camera that I'm shooting on right now. I have it on a gorilla pod. So, you know, what I will typically do is I will leave this plate on the bottom of whichever camera I'm using. And then if I need to move from the tripod to something else and to the gorilla pod, whatever it may be, I can literally just slide it out of the quick release plate that's on the tripod and then slide it into the quick release plate of uh, whatever other piece of equipment I'm using. And um, it's just quick and easy. These things are cheap, maybe like 20 bucks if I remember correctly. Probably should have double checked all that, but that's okay. But you get the idea. So very convenient if you're moving gear around a lot um, in your day-to-day -day operations and not that uh, expensive. So worth looking into. Moving on, um, speaking of tripods, we'll talk about this thing here. Now I haven't, I actually don't use this a ton these days and that's just because I'm not doing a lot of vlogging style content or really content that requires tripods. But when I am, this thing comes in handy. I used to use a Gorilla Pod. Gorilla Pods are fine, but as most people will tell you over time, they tend to lose their flexibility a little bit. Um, and they don't, they're not as sturdy anymore. This small rig, uh, tripod, it's pretty flexible. These legs are, can be re pretty stiff. So you can have it stand up like this, or you can, you know, open them all the way up to here. This top ball head sticks pretty well. You can move it wherever you want to. And, you know, great for vlogging. You can kind of just form it how you like, get the proper angle, holds nicely in the hand. And it's just a nice sort of uh, relatively inexpensive uh, and cheap alternative or, you know, good, good alternative for the Gorilla Pod. So um, there you go. Small rig. I don't remember what the name of this is, but just look up, you know, small rig uh, mini tripod and I'm sure you'll find this. Next. This is, um, we'll just, we won't spend too much time on this, but this is a Peak Design um, camera strap. I like Peak Design stuff, very high quality. I have, actually I have another Peak Design um, piece of, uh, a Peak Design accessory that I'll be talking about shortly. I like their camera straps. They adjust very quickly. If you need them to be longer or shorter, just pull it, snap it back into place. Of course, the Peak Design ecosystem uses um, these little guys, which are just these little tags that snap into um, your strap. They don't look like they're that sturdy, but I assure you they are. Never had any issues with these. But this camera strap's good. Um, lasts for a while, and I use it uh, all the time. So, peak design. There you go. This thing's cool. I, I wouldn't necessarily say that I use it. Oh, am I still on camera too? There we go. I wouldn't necessarily say that I use this constantly, but this is just kind of a nice accessory to have if you have a lot of SD cards. So, um... I have some uh, CF cards in here, compact flash that I don't use because I don't have a camera that takes CF anymore, but might as well hang on to it. But yeah, I've got a selection of um, SD cards in here. You even got a little um, little device that helps you can help you get things, a little tool to get the cards out more easily. 
um, and you can store many different sizes of cards. For example, from compact flash all the way down to standard SD to micro SD. It's a lot of different, a lot of room in here. And obviously this thing is pretty sturdy. It's going to keep all of your cards in one place and keep them very protected. Check this thing out. I'm glad I picked this up. And that just kind of stays in my camera bag all the time. Let's bring up that other Peak Design accessory here. So this is a Peak Design field pouch. You know, technically you could uh, accomplish the same type of thing with just some sort of fanny pack, um, but I like this one a lot. Again, Peak Design quality is very good. Um, you've got a few pockets in there, so and a, and a zipper pouch, so you can put some cables or some cleaning wipes, earplugs if you're working loud events, uh, extra batteries, um, really anything you can kind of think of. And then it's got some belt loops in the back. You can just slip it on your belt. And, you know, when I work fight nights, I keep this thing with me at all times so I can keep, you know, like bout sheets and pens and, like I said, spare batteries and uh, um, uh, lens cloths and things like that. Very handy if you need something quick and you don't want to have to carry around a full camera bag with you. So Peak Design Field Pouch, there you go. Speaking of uh, lens wipes, I mean, you can find... Many different versions of these. These are made by Zeiss. I think I got these on Amazon. But these little wipes are super handy for a quick uh, cleaning of your camera lenses. Uh, they're designed for glass, so they're not going to script your lens. I mean, you don't want to go too crazy just wiping them all the time. But uh, if you need to um, do a quick cleaning of your lenses, pick up some of these. They're very inexpensive. They come in a box. You get a whole bunch of them for a small price, and they'll last you whoops, a long time. So Zeiss camera wipes. Um, I'm going to talk about this here. So this is uh, one of two ND filters I own. The other one is just a, um, a single, whatever you call it. It's not, it's not an adjustable. This is an adjustable uh, ND filter. This is the Peter McKinnon version, the two to five stop. It's the first generation, I believe. But, um, and it's an 82 millimeter thread. Uh, this thing's awesome. And, you know, normally when you have YouTubers and things like that tied to a product, you may get questionable quality. The quality on this is, is really good. There's a lot of reviews online that talk about how well this thing is made and how well it works. I really like this, especially if you're shooting daytime, because you can pop this on the end of your camera. And actually, here, just pop it on the end of the camera. You know, if you go from, say, a bright... Um, sun or like a bright sun scene into some shadow or maybe you go from outdoors to indoors uh, it's not always easy to change the exposure seamlessly within your camera but with this because it's a two to five stop indie filter you can literally just very uh, ever so slightly change the intensity and thus the exposure and uh, and it's nice and smooth it doesn't click into place um, so as long as you can kind of do it smoothly you can control that so uh, it's also nice to not have to change your different exposure settings in camera. If you, you know, you can just kind of set a sort of a middle ground exposure and then you can use this to fine tune your exposure as you're shooting, whether it's photo or video. A great little tool also comes with a really cool, really protective rubber uh, lens cap. The only thing I don't like, which isn't a huge deal because I don't typically use lens caps as much as I used to, but you can't use lens caps when you have this thing on. So... Just something to keep in mind, but not a huge deal for me. And very cool device. Also comes in this super slick um, carrying case. So there you go. Put this away. Put that away. All right. Um, a few more things to show you here. This thing's just kind of cool um, for getting your colors correct. If you're shooting photos or videos and you want to kind of make sure that your colors are very color accurate. Now, this one I think is more geared for photography, not so much video because it's pretty small and it's kind of, you know, you if you for video, you'd probably want something that takes up a little bit more of the frame. The thing with these, is these are very expensive, like relatively speaking. I think this was closer to like 80 or 100 bucks because uh, it's got to be very color accurate. It's not color accurate. It's not going to work. But, um, you know, if if perfect, if really good color really accurate color is important to you. Something like this might be helpful. Also comes with a little uh, uh, white balance card on the other side. Super small, super thin, super compact, and just kind of fits wherever you need it to fit. Very cool. Um, 
talk about this. This uh, travels with me everywhere. This is in, you know, you can find this. It, you don't need this one in particular, but this is a RAV Power 26,800 milliamp hour portable charger. Uh, it's, you can put micro USB, USB C, and two USB uh, ports in here. I've used this to come on, focus. focus there we go. That might work. I don't know if it's working. There you go. But, um, I've used this to charge my laptop. I've used this to charge my phone um, and all sorts of different devices. And this thing will last for quite a while. Um, so it's always good to have a little bit of a backup in case you're not able to get to an outlet of some kind. So always have one of these, I would say, especially if you travel. And then lastly, uh, just got two lenses that I will go over here shortly. These are a couple more Sony lenses that I like. Um, I'm going to talk about this one first. So this one is the 16 to 35 millimeter f2.8 Sony lens. Had this one for a little while. Uh, this is a great wide angle lens, very sharp. Um, uh, one thing I like about the Sony, excuse me, Sony lenses is it's got a little customizable button on the side there that allows you to, just like you can customize buttons on the Sony a7 III and other Sony cameras, you can do the same with this button. The way that I use the button is to auto or quickly switch from auto focus to manual focus. So. You know, if I'm in a scene, let's say, where there's a lot of movement, but I want to kind of keep, you know, maybe there's people moving in and out, and I want to keep my focus on a single spot, um, I can just kind of find it with autofocus, press that button. Now I'm in manual focus, and it's not going to change as things move in front of the camera. But, uh, yeah, if you need a wide-angle lens, and if you can afford it, because, I mean, Sony lenses aren't cheap, this is the way to go. And then, finally, I uh, wanted to feature this bad boy here this is the uh sony 135 millimeter g master f 1.8 so this thing has a nice wide aperture um it's got two customizable buttons on it um let's see one and where's it one here and one there it's also got an option right there to declick the aperture what that means is, um, you know, on a typical camera that has an aperture ring on it, uh, when you turn it, it's going to it's going to kind of click into the different values. However, uh, on this one, you can declick it, so it sounds more like. So this can sort of work almost like that ND filter in that um, you can get nice smooth changes in exposure if you need to. Uh, so nice for video. This thing is tack sharp also has three zones for focus so if you uh, just kind of need the full range you can set it to full if you if you're going to be a little bit closer to whatever you're shooting you can set it to uh, a closer focal range and then you can also um, set it to farther so a little bit more um, flexibility there and uh, what else can i say about this it's just just a great overall lens if you shoot photography i take this to uh when i shoot uh, like shows events and things like that so you can kind of be farther back and get some nice um shots with some really good background separation but just tack sharp uh lets a lot of light in with that 1.8 aperture great lens uh, and i use it a lot so there you go that's um that's kind of that's just the gear that i use on a day-to-day -day basis i have more stuff you know i have gimbals and i have lights and things like that but um this is the gear that is typically either with me or in use a lot when i'm at home uh, or at a gig doing my thing so like i said links to a lot of that stuff is in the description below feel free to check it out if you um if you don't see anything down there and you want to know where i got it from leave me a comment and i'll get you a link for that but uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and call this one done for the day. So if you got any value out of what I had to say today, it would be great if you hit that subscribe button wherever you happen to be watching or listening. Also follow me on social media at Ryan Hafey on Instagram and Twitter. And uh, feel free to swing by after the show, ask me a question, or say hello. He's like what I did there. But until next time, keep on creating, making, and doing. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.